In a world where we hear about manifesting all of the time, it can get confusing how to actually manifest. How do I do this? And what can I actually manifest? Pam gives us nine experiments to practice building a relationship with the universe and practice manifesting. And the first experiment, the importance of not being earnest. I discovered that I usually wake up pretty delighted about the day ahead. However, dancing in the morning added even more joy. My boys joined in. I received my cosmic joke in the form of a song, Everything is Awesome, and my son and I did the extra credit dancing in the aisles of Target while testing out their speakers. I gotta say, I felt pretty good after that first experiment. And then we moved on to experiment two, a quick refresher course, and what a fun scavenger hunt to have. It turned out finding some of the items on the list was easier than others. However, when it proved that once again, what I look for, I will find. The hardest part was finding the numbers 222 in a row. I finally found them on a license plate and I was pumped. I truly believe that our thoughts guide us in both negative and positive ways. I choose to think that I provide helpful content. And when I started thinking this, instead of worrying if people find my content helpful, I started to enjoy the process more and found that I opened pathways to learn a bit more about creating content and received a few more follows throughout all of my social media. So that felt pretty great. And that was in the experiment, why you're not capable of judging anything. I recently started a positivity podcast where I send positivity out several times a week to you. It's my way of doing post-it notes from home. And whenever I'm talking to someone who used to bother me, I start thinking about the things I enjoy and appreciate about the person. This helped me with several phone conversations that I would have usually felt stressful or felt unpleasant. And instead, these conversations were very pleasant and I stayed present in the moment and didn't feel stressed at all. There is no them. My favorite experiment was when I wrote, you are loved on paper hearts and then wrapped them around $5 bills and clipped them together. And I enlisted Keone and Mikayo to help. We dropped the love package on the ground, placed them in bathroom stalls, and it was so much fun. And then I noticed right after we started receiving money back instantly from surprise discounts on items at the store which is rare because healthy vegan stuff is hardly ever on sale. So we were able to just start saving some money here and there. We got offered financial assistance with a trip. I got another client and more. So that's really exciting. And then we also found pennies all over the place. I'm not even kidding you. Like seriously, I'm still finding pennies and other change on the ground all of the time. It's pretty cool. It's not complicated. Now going on walks is one of my favorite things to do. If I can, I try to get in a walk every single day. And I had taken a break for a long time going on walks after my dog Maddox died about a year and a half ago, where I had gone on a walk every single day pretty much my entire life, except for this last year and a half. So we started walking again. And on our family walk, we saw... So many caterpillars, seriously, a ton, all over the sidewalk. We were on towards the end of our walk as we were talking about the present and the future, kind of our goals, our plans, and there were literally caterpillars everywhere. Different kinds of caterpillars too. I didn't even know there were so many different types of caterpillars. So I thought, hmm, what do caterpillars mean? If I were to Google, what's the meaning of caterpillars? So I did. And I said, they're all about pure potential. And I definitely took that as a positive sign from the universe and nature. Because experiment six was all about nature versus news and why you should really get out more. Then I moved on to creating a new mantra for myself, which I thought went perfect with the caterpillars 
and pure potential. So my new mantra is, the universe is opening new doors for me. And I can literally feel the energy shift inside of me and around me. It's almost as if the energy is becoming even more alive. It's feeling pretty cool. And that's experiment seven, if you say so. Your words are wands that shape your life. And then with experiment eight, I had so much fun drinking water because I love it anyway, but giving it a purpose. I definitely saw a difference in the darkness of the bags under my eyes. I definitely looked more refreshed. And that experiment is the placebo, the truth about bending reality. Either I haven't made the needed time and space for this, or I'm blocking it in some way, because I'm still waiting on this one. Perhaps I didn't trust it enough, which would be like me. I'm still working on this one. So my goal is to make more time to meditate so that I can have my yabba dabba do experience, transcendence. It's just how we roll. And of course, I'm one for doing extra credit. And if I have an opportunity to do one more experiment, I will take it. And though my water did not turn into wine, it was definitely smoother and sweeter than the other glass I didn't put my energy into. Experiment 10, it's time to get down. This was a really fun book that gets you actively engaged with manifesting and discovering that what you focus on and your thoughts and your beliefs really can shape your life. If you have a book that you would like me to review, please leave your suggestion in the comments. Remember to like.